This week, we're at the Lancashire Mining Museum, if you haven't guessed, and we're to the west of Manchester city centre at Astley. Hello, my name is Martin, and welcome back to another video. We're here at the Lancashire Mining Museum. We're going to take a look around. These are the Northern Monkeys. They've got their own YouTube channel. That's Kipper. <laughs> we'll go with Boff. What's your name? We'll go with Boff. That's Kipper, Boff, and Bruce. And they've got their own channel over in Burnley and they find some amazing stuff like old mines and everything. In fact, there's times where it gets a bit scary, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> stuff that I wouldn't no. do. No, so no. <laughs> you need to check them out. Anyway, we're going to take a look around the mining museum and then uh, we'll see if we can see the great big machine in there. Sure. So Fred Dibner in his yard, garden at the back of his house, had the, he built his own headgear. I think he dug his own shaft without the council knowing. God bless him. Um, and that's his headgear from his garden that they've got here at the Lancashire Mining Museum. Now this is a fantastic place to visit if you like your old industrial heritage and machinery. Obviously mainly, mainly mining machinery, but like this old uh, railway crane here, um, they've got all sorts of things to look at. Now I know what you're going to say, what was the maker's play on that Martin? So we'll take a quick zoom in here. Cowans and Sheldons and Company Limited, Engineers Carlisle 1908 I think it said. Um, so there you go, fantastic place to visit. We'll take a look round at some of the uh, the old stuff lying around. Just been told that some of these uh, this stuff they've rescued here has got quite interesting stories. This railway wagon apparently was submerged in the Bridgewater Canal, and it got rescued sometime in the 90s. Um, apparently, back in the day, some kids let the brake off of something and it ran through off the lines and straight down into the Bridgewater Canal. And when the canal got dredged, this bit, just from here, was sticking out. And uh, the people at the mining museum actually rescued it, got it down here and gave it a bit of a coat of paint, did it up. Uh, so fantastic, God knows how many years that's spent submerged in the Bridgewater Canal, brilliant story. And here's the actual picture of it sat in the canal after it had been drained. Um, we think it went down there sometime in the 70s. That picture looks a bit 80s to me looking at that car, not quite sure. But there it is in the mud feeling rather sorry for itself. Um, and then this picture here uh, shows it when it got to the mining museum with a big dint in the side of it. They knocked out the dint, they give it a coat of paint and it stands the way it does today. What you'll notice is as well, we're on the different gauges on this, little, on this track here. Over there you've got a um, standard BR gauge. This is the narrower gauge that was probably above ground for the coal trucks and everything, and an even narrower gauge there. Uh, so it's quite fascinating to see. So yeah, this was a bit of a discussion we had at the uh, Lancashire Mining Museum about how different collieries for the, um, you know, for the, the tracks down in the mine and also just above ground for the little coal trucks. They didn't have standard gauges apparently. Uh, some of them were similar, but some of them weren't always standard. So it was a bit of a pain when they tried to order locomotives from manufacturers. Right, I absolutely love these old Lancashire boilers. I presume these are the ones that used to uh, create the steam to drive the winding machine that we're going to look at in a bit. Uh, Boff loves these as well. He's got my torch. Let's take a look inside. Salford at the end. Um, Let's turn that light off here. It's J Hodgkinson. Uh, do you know what? We've already got a J Hodgkinson in group. I'm not even joking. Have you? Yeah. He's going to be well impressed with that. These things are amazing. I'm not going to claim to know how they work, but looking at him is just fantastic. Antiques from a bygone era. Uh, absolutely beautiful. I hope they're put to uh, good use. These. Is the word leviathans or bear moths? I'm not sure. But I always imagine the workshops where these things were made, having done a bit of a sheet metal work myself, imagine the hammering and the banging and the craftsmen that made these things. 
absolutely amazing. So one of the things I want to do while I'm here is stand underneath the pit head. And I think this is the way. If we can get underneath that gear, that'll be brilliant. There's the pit head gear. Last standing pit head in Lancashire, that. See the red oxide cage there in front of us? Well, that's a double-decker cage, so that would go down the shaft. Uh, miners on the top, and if you look at the bottom there, there's some rails, and they put coal trucks underneath and bring a coal truck up or down uh, with the winding gear, the winding engine that we're going to go and look at in a moment. See how the pit head gear stands on that plinth, that brick plinth? Well, we're going to go and have a look just underneath there. Um, not at the shaft, unfortunately, we can't see the shaft, but we're going to get the camera down inside that brick plinth. Now, this is Sam, one of the volunteers at the uh, mining museum. I was chatting to him and he took my camera where I'm not allowed to go past the cages and took it to have a look at the bottom of the uh, headgear. There's the uh, the top of the shaft, which is now capped with concrete. Uh, capped in the 70s, I think he's seen. There's a little grid there that vents off uh, methane. And 20 feet below that is water. So the shaft is... Uh, if you fell down there, you'd only fall 20 feet and then you'd be uh, submerged in water. So the water, water comes basically 20 feet off the surface of that cap. Uh, so he's going to take the uh, camera now around the corner through the bushes and we're going to have a look at what's inside that um, that brick plinth as I said. So through these bushes will lead us into that plinth, that brick plinth. Now we're at the side of the shaft here apparently. You've got some old, look, what looks like steam piping on the floor there. Some old original electrical switch gear on the left here. Uh, a lot of corrugated iron in there isn't there. Now, rumour had it that when the, when the, in the early days of the mining museum, when they were knocking through some of these walls and exploring this area, they had to be careful because down here, I think if you go left, you'll actually end up, if you start knocking through walls, you'll end up going through into the shaft. Uh, so, absolutely quite a fascinating, fascinating little place to look. I'd like to have took longer, really, but Sam gives us a quick glimpse and then he, he, uh, he turns around and he brings the camera back out. Now, the Lancashire Mining Museum, when it was a working colliery, was known as Astley Green Colliery. Um, it was in operation between 1908 and 1970, and the sinking of number one shaft began in May of 1908. And it was a, a very troublesome affair. Uh, they had to get down you know, almost 30 metres through very unstable ground on the, uh, the famous, the infamous Chat Moss that had previously um, caused major problems to George Stevenson when he was building the first Manchester to Liverpool railway. But anyway, uh, the unstable ground at Chat Moss caused major problems and they had to get down to the bedrock. Um, and then they sunk the shaft and frighteningly, the shaft at, uh, at Astley Green, which is naturally now flooded, is 2,670 feet deep, which is, if you think about that, the mind boggles, to be honest with you. This picture here shows the extensive um, railway yards that surrounded the, uh, the, the colliery. The, 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 uh, the mining museum that we visit today is only a, a shadow of what it was, or the ground, the patch of ground that it sits on. It was a massive area full of railway yards. 30 men in each one of them. Hang on, so you're saying in that cage, how many men? Each, each section, you've got 30 men in it. This this gear here, what the man told us in there, had three high, instead of it being too high, it was three high and you've got 90 men on. So 30 men in each one of them sections there, look, what doesn't look like you'd get, I don't know, what would you get six men in Do there? Do you mean them cages? Yeah, them cages. Yeah, yeah wow. Claustrophobic, yeah? Like, no such somebody's word. nose would have been touching the thing, wouldn't it, going down. 100% somebody's nose. Yeah. One fellow up, chance, it leaned on the back and he fell out. Did it here? And, and another fella got killed down there because someone dropped a hammer. Oh, dear. That's the tale I've got told. And, yeah. so, and two carpenters was down and the rope fell down and killed them. Did you mean? But unless you've got five miners, apparently, didn't classify it as tragedy. Shut up. So, so, so it was only five that were killed that were a tragedy? Oh, yes, the five, there's a tragedy for headlines. <laughs> oh, Any death's a tragedy, isn't it? Well, that's you right. I mean? It used to be at one time, it used to be ten before you could call it a tragedy. But hey-ho. 
that's right. If you didn't know any better, so you just automatically did what you had to. Yeah. They wouldn't, no be, they wouldn't have questioned it back then, would they? No, 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 not at all. I was like, I can't go down there, I'm claustrophobic. That was an unknown word. I, no, no such word as no. I don't want that for me to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was slightly more spoiled than that. Mm. <laughs> Didn't do us no harm though, did it? Well, no, I suppose no. not. So the main reason we're here, Bruce and Kipper, they're going to run the machine, is that right? They are, yes. And they don't run it very often? No, they don't. We're lucky to be here, to be fair. Yeah, so sometimes when you come, they won't always run the winding machine. That's the machine we're talking about. It was the, Apparently it's a massive wheel, and it uh, had the cables on it that went up there to the, uh, to the pit head, and obviously dropped down the shaft. So two o'clock, the same. Yep, two o'clock. Okay, so this is the largest surviving colliery winding engine of its type in Europe. It develops 3,300 horsepower at 58 revs per minute. The engine was installed in 1912 and took two years to, uh, to put in. Now, although the, uh, the colliery closed down in 1970, work on the, um, on the preservation didn't start until 1983, and it's a damn fine job. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> most of the, uh, the colliery down uh, and I think the story goes somebody came along and said hang on you're not going to pull that building down there you've got that beautiful machine in so uh, they saved it didn't they and thank god they did because the volunteers here have done a fantastic job of keeping this going you talked to that man just then so is it electric now uh, well, no compressed air compressed air right so was it the boilers outside used to power yeah. it. That is up to, up to new air compressors. It used to be up to, up to the boilers. Like it's, it's they've fitted old to new. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You don't have the steam power. So, so it was steam. Yeah. It was but steam. now it's compressed air that drives it. Yes. Right. Got it. Now I have to mention this amazing pit head gear, the last surviving pit head gear in the Lancashire coal field. It stands 98 feet high, and it was built in 1910 by Head Wrightson of Stockton-on-Tees for the Astley Green Colliery. It's made from raw iron lattice girders with riveted plates and joints and unfortunately, can you believe it, it's a grade 2 schedule monument but it's on the at-risk register. I would love to see this amazing piece of engineering saved because it would break my heart if we, if we lost this and there is a danger that we could lose it because already it's, it's uh, parts of it are unsafe um, and you know, if you get yourself down there, 
chuck a donation into the pot and let's see if we can get it saved. We've got a lamp room. Lamp room. Oh, wow. Look what's on the table. Oh, wow. Genuinely, first time I've ever that I know was a Davy lamp? Yeah, it's called Protector Lamp. Protector Lamp. Yeah. It's like it was developed on from the original thing, yeah. was it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll just simple. The company's still going, they're still making them now. Are they? What is it? Protector. The, Eccles. Eccles. That's the name of the company, Protector Lamps. In Eccles, and they're actually still going to this day. Are you buy them still? If you've got 400 quid spare. Right, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but you can go on eBay. So what is it? Burn. It burns a chemical called colzoline. We can't get all the colzoline anymore. So what you can use is is Coleman fuel from Go Outdoors. And that's basically your key components of the protector lamp. Now, the idea is, is it lets the gas in but it doesn't allow the gas to it doesn't allow the gas to explode. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that that uh, that it that And it's due it. to the gauzes, yeah. If you put your gauzes in there, and is anyone with a lighter on them? Yeah, nice. Show you a little trick. So obviously it'll burn freely out there. As soon as I put it in there, the flame cannot escape, but you're allowed to burn the gas. Oh, right. and that's the idea. And the obviously if the oxygen runs out, it goes out. Yeah. There's two ways of testing with these. You've got this little device, it's called an aspirator bulb. Yeah. And the idea is no does anyone know what the deputy stick is? The deputy stick for uh one for testing. Right, the, the, the... yeah, you can use it for that. Yeah, your deputy stick is 36 inches long or one yard, so you can test how far your pit props are. Yeah, as well, you can stick your deputy stick on the end there. And what you do is you squeeze the air out, and it's a one way check valve. Yeah, that's what right. I want the deputy stick yeah. for that one. So you put that on there, your deputy stick, you press, and then that should hold, which it isn't because it's a duff valve. You raise that up into the ceiling, we'll just do that, and then you get, you take your sample then, you take this off, and normally on the other one, on the GR6, this is a Type 6, you put it in the side and you watch the flame, and if the flame rises, just get out, just get out basically, and down here is your percentage, so I think it's 9% is the dangerous limit yeah, for explosion. This before, we? we need a lamp boys, I want one of these boys. 9% of... The gas, any gas like? Any gas is dangerous, 9%. No. Well, you can also test for carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. Because they don't um, explode, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. with methane, which that'll a lot of... Up, it? Yeah, that'll go up, that raises in the ceiling. With carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, it's down on <laughs> the ground, so you could basically get your lamp <clears throat> and put it down your side and watch the flames, the flames start dancing around. Get out, right. get, it, get it ventilated. And these gases, they, have, they call them fire damp, black damp and all the rest Fire of damp, white damp, after damp, there's all various different kinds of damps. Uh, obviously, you, like I've just said, you carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. It's all explaining the same gas. It's, I just heard black and fire damp, like I've not even heard them. The, the, it's like the original <laughs> names for the gases, yeah, weren't it? Yeah, it was the old, it's the old names. Before they knew what they were, weren't it, or yeah, something, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so any type of gas down, down below is dangerous, even if it's choking gas or explosive yeah. gas. Or oh, oh, lack of gas, like, like oh, lack of oxygen. Gas, lack of oxygen. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Goldburn in 1970, 1979. What happened was is they, the fans basically stopped working and they got the guys down to come fix the fans and it was and the lower methane was building up at 90 litres a second. So it's a lot of bloody gas that we're giving off. It and then, we need a small percentage. Yeah, yeah. When it, when they fixed the fans, there was a spark, bang, that was it then. Bloody hell. And that was ten men, well, nine men gone, one still survives to this day. Is it? Really? Yeah, a guy called Brian Rosefold. Does he come here? Does I've he? never seen him, I've never I've never met the guy. Um, but, yeah, he's still alive, he was an apprentice electrician. And he's still, he's still going. Mm. But, the, what from one tale I got told is, um, there was a, guy, a couple of guys in the locomotive garage underground, and they heard a loud bang and the reversal of earth law, a loud pop, and they were like, what the hell was that? And they walked in and they could smell something burning, and they could, they could see the dust coming down. So they got on the train, and drove down the scene, and they saw guys coming up towards them. They got them on the train, dead, straight away. They couldn't identify who they were. They could, well, they could identify them through the tallies. Yeah. They were just so burned. Yeah. Uh, soft rescuers. So there was an explosion on the ground. Yeah. You pull the pin. 
basically it's that. Pull that. All that falls away. I'm not going to hold it because we're mm. actually sort to put back in. And then you pull that out. This is a training um, rescue one. You put that in your gob. Put that put it in your head. Put that in your gob, and that goes on your nose. And what is it a filter or is it? There's a chemical in there called opcolite, and it converts carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide, breathable carbon dioxide. One of the bad, one side effects of using this is they can burn you because it gets hot. Being a chemical, an exothermic chemical reaction, then inside of here is a heat exchanger. Mm. It always worked from what I've been told, and it used to burn your lips. Mm. And you could be wearing it for 60 minutes. This one's a 60 minute one, and the bigger ones are 90 minutes from what I can remember. Mm. So and that, that's called a self rescuer. Self rescuer, yeah. This is the. So, can I, when did them come in then? And take it, is that a modern thing? Or? Not really, no. I think they came in during the 50s. So, um, like 50s technology? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it actually became a regulation that everyone must have a self rescuer and a light underground. Right. Also, as well, I bet you're wondering why there's different colours. Yeah, right. indeed. Yeah. Okay. Well, I hadn't, but that's fantastic. Yeah. So, black, apparently, from what I've been told, is probationary minor. From what I've been told, don't guarantee it. Yellow's minor, uh, your white is deputy or manager. Then you go down to the blue one, that is fitter, engineer. And then you've got your green one, which is man's rescue. And then you've got red ones down here, which are electrician or fire. Wow. And if you're wondering, yeah, this one still works. Nice, that's me. That still works. So yeah. you'd have been a miner? Uh, that one. I would have been a miner. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Wow. I would have enjoyed a new leaf. I wouldn't have worked in mine. <laughs> that is fascinating. I've, that. Never, I've never worked down a mine. No, no, never. Yeah, never yeah. Have. I've been in plenty, I've not worked in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a place in Poland you can actually go down, apparently. And you can get fixed for about five quid. And you can actually go on the face with the miners while they're cutting coal. No That's way. Good. So Marilyn, the lovely lady at the Lancashire Mining Museum, asked me if I'd like to dress up for a bit of a photo shoot. And I politely declined, but I said, I know a man who will do. <laughs> Look at me, Emma. <laughs> when you David's nightmare being on camera. Yeah, I've genuinely never had as many cameras pointed at me <laughs> before. <laughs> <laughs> Can I smack the clock? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 you've got your anvil there. Just a regular morning in Lancashire. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit easy being on camera when you've got a costume. So you, yeah, you, I might start wearing costumes. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not so good. Like it, it, it don't feel like I, I can, I can see myself on my screen though. <laughs> and I'm going a little bit red looking at it. Now, come on, you all clutter in my workshop up. <laughs> right, a fantastic place, brilliant day out, plenty to look at, plenty to see. They've even got a little railway for the kids to take a ride on. So check the website before you go, check the opening times. Uh, I'll put a link to the website in the description to this video and try and pin one in the first comment as well. So there you go, Lancashire Mining Museum here at Astley. Guys. Brilliant day. Brilliant that, wasn't it? Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Oh, and the man behind the camera is Mr. Daniel Ranks, the only talented member of Team Zero. Thanks for watching. Take care. Mm -hmm. See you in the next video. So bye, boys. See you later. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>